Hey guys, I'm a vlogger. I have a vloggy hey camera. Hey guys, look at me. Welcome look at to me my more. new channel. Yeah. I'm a douchebag too. Yeah. Look at my cool Joby Gorilla Pod. I'm not stealing this idea from anybody. <laughs> it's not stealing at all. Oh my Dick. God. Oh, I will say me. though, the autofocus on that thing. Yeah, the autofocus on this thing, you can't beat. This is a 77D, guys. This is what we used to do the vlog when we went to New York City to do the Spark event with DJI. And I went with the whole idea, and I said this to Steven on the weekend before we went. I'm like, the idea is to go to New York. I know that the event's not going to be very good because it's an announcement. We could sit at home and watch it live if we really wanted. But we went with the idea that what we're going to do is we are going to create a vlog yeah we're going and we're gonna make a vlog that's our focus of this day is to go to the spark event but make a vlog around it are you making fun of me the way i'm hitting the no <laughs> by the way every time so you do aggressive. that every camera in the room shakes see that everyone so anyway this camera was super awesome to vlog with the rotating screen is you can't do without it you have to have that in order to vlog because i had my sunglasses on i could look I still look straight at the lens. Well, but you, and you had your I want sunglasses to check my anyway, so it's not like you could tell where your eye line was anyway. No, but I want to check my framing. Sure. Uh, but the dual pixel AF, it didn't miss. Not once. It didn't miss. Yeah. And that's the key to that whole thing is that it didn't miss. The only thing I hate is it looks ridiculous. It's huge. That camera is huge compared to something like this, like the Sony RX100 yeah, Mark IV. But if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. No, I agree. But yeah, with I think it worked awesome, out. With my awesome lens. Uh, Todd, don't tell Todd, though, that we dropped his lens a couple, couple times. times. We actually rubbed then it on some homeless people. We'll just switch it out with somebody else's fucked up lens. We already did. I'll have the trifecta. Oh, let me do an intro. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo dot com and welcome to the Raw Talk episode number 221. My hair's down today because I was busy last night. It's a first. Hockey. Well, first for Raw Talk. I just didn't feel like doing it last night. The hockey game ended at 11 and I was just like, you know, Maddie and I made dinner. Then we were watching uh, hockey and then I like your hair down. Looks good. It's fine. Sweet jacket, by the way. Yeah, you know, this show's not brought to you by Road. <laughs> <laughs> they just sent us these jackets. I'm Pink wearing it. Jackets. You guys each have one, but they're not here for Dude, some I reason. I wish we would have brought them in yeah, today. Yeah, we should we would have looked like a gang. We could have like yeah. danced in or something. But yeah, they yeah. are pretty sweet jackets. <laughs> this is a medium. Ooh, Superman. Sweet. What's up? Oh, hey. <laughs> Hold on. I worked my arms out today, so this is medium? This is tough. I can't tell. <laughs> Maybe put on a extra small. Shut up, Todd. <laughs> I went to Todd's house this weekend. Yeah, you did. Uh, Todd had a little party, right? Yeah, I mean, I invited him after he overheard. Shot. I mean, yeah. He shows up as every, almost everybody is gone. He shows up well, I was at my brother's first and he foremost. Did. He did. He was going to come early. I thought he was going to be like the guy that comes very first when starts you're not even 7 ready to go. Starts at 7 o'clock. He's at 6.59. No, it starts like at 2, and Jared's going to be there like at 1.30. That was like, the plan. Oh, hey, guys. I, did, I just thought I'd stop by. <laughs> that was the plan, and then I got sidetracked with making... Uh, maybe was that was I making that Sony video? I think I made that Sony video on the roof. Mm. No, that was the day before. I was making some other piece of content, and then I had to go. Wait, Sony video on the roof? Yeah, you didn't see it? No, I don't think so. Well, I put up the Sony A9 unboxing and sniff test. I saw that. School style from Alan. Yeah. I went and did it myself. Cut in two pieces of B-roll. Hope you like that. Ooh, look at that. Did you like that cutting? I it was did. great. Excellent. It was great. Well, the first thing I thought of as so an unboxing means I take the camera out of a box and I tell you what's in the box. It's weird. You and how the it? thing feels. Hmm. And I have an idea for a new unboxing. I'll tell you later because I don't want to give it away to the people at home. With the new set, yeah. Yeah. It'll look good. No, that's not the idea. I have a new oh, idea for unboxing. That. Okay. No, it's just a new idea. Gotcha. It's an idea you just thought three seconds ago. It's not. Anything it's, we plan is out the door. It's not. It's a new type of unboxing. Do you want to hear about it now? You just said no. Yeah, yeah. but we could bleep it, and then the people at home watching live could is listen it to it. Is it taking it out of a bubble? Sure. You want to hear, Todd? And Dan, you're going to you're gonna just silence our audio or bleep the audio. What do you mean, no? That should be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> no. So basically what we're going to do in the future for, for unboxing and sniff tests I'm gonna oh my I'm gonna put a <laughs> table I'm gonna <gasps> I'm gonna put it on top of the <gasps> I'm gonna 
away and let the camera run for five minutes. Wow. So Best funny. Best idea ever. So funny. It is a b- I really like it. good idea. You don't like think nobody knows what that idea is. They don't. They can't hear it. Except they on can. Facebook. <laughs> they can hear it. They're special because they saw it on the live. And it'll stay up, I'm sure, on your Facebook page until this comes out. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> but that's, that's... So I made the unboxing and sniff test. And the first thing I noticed when I put the Sony A9 in my hands yeah. is that it did not feel great you know how you put a camera in your hands and it feels like you put in a sony 1dx mark ii and you're like this feels like a brick and i've said that because that camera is a brick of a camera yeah and it feels huge in your hands it's easy to hold on to but it feels huge so when i put the a9 in my hands there's like some way that they have the grip something was protruding right it was just like felt like it was shooting into my hands and that's not because i have regular size hands versus small hands versus big hands it doesn't matter it just felt awkward and it's not because i haven't used a lot of sony's in the past i've used a lot of everything in the past it's just that you're used to your d5 as well i mean that's something you are accustomed to and you like sure well the nikons but even when you hold on to remember like the D5500 or something. The new or the D5600. It were like, feels good. Yeah. So, But the, there's just a certain way the grips feel. Yeah. And I explained why. And the buttons. Just the two things. The front dial and the back dial. They are awkwardly placed. They are set behind like lips and in front of... The, and you have to... Fit, you have to think about it. Like you have to... And yes, it may become intuitive, but it's in the wrong places. Um, and then the funny thing with the comments is that it's it's one thing to comment on a camera that you own or that you've touched. But I guarantee you that 99.9% of the people that commented on my comment on how it felt in my hands personally I haven't touched have never nine. touched the camera because it just came out. And you were saying in the video that it didn't was not the same form factor as the A7? No, it's different. It was a different grip? Yeah. Hmm. And But even the A7, you know, those things have... Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I made a video on the roof just talking about my I saw opinion. your Ranty McRanterson video after the fact. What rant? On like Instagram stories. Oh, did I make one? Oh, yeah. What did I say? You said some, some very nice words to I all did? the people that were bitching. <laughs> I don't remember anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so you're going away for 10 days? I'm going away forever. No, 10 days. Yeah. Disney. Leaving this Friday, which by the time this comes out, I'll already be in Disney. Doing what? Disney stuff. Sucking Mickey's balls. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, no, I'll be there from Friday to Saturday night of next week. And then Sunday when I come back, I have to shoot the Radio 104.5 birthday show all day right away. Mm. So mm. it's going to be a crazy weekend next mm. weekend. So crazy. What cameras yeah. are you taking? I'm not taking anything for Disney. I think I'm literally just going to use my iPhone and just take some snapshots. We have the photo pass. Remember and we talked about that pass. a couple yeah. weeks ago. on That's the way to go. So you yeah. know what's funny about Disney and taking pictures you know, I was at Todd's house, yeah. and I go by the wall. I'm like, who is this nerdy white guy down on one knee, and why is he at Disney World? So Todd gets engaged at Disney. Did you? Crushed. Yeah. <laughs> so cliche. Right. So, so stupid. Cliche. The castle's Real in the background. Original. The castle's in the background. Some woman sitting there, all like, get away from me, you dirty guy. No, she was balling. That was Jeannie. But Todd, tell us how the pictures came about oh no I, I had i don't know what he I probably had a point and shoot or something sure stupid yeah and it's a line to go take your picture at the castle and i just turned around to the guy I was like follow my lead he's like oh okay who was the guy a, an employee or just a random the next person in line oh the next person in line not a photographer it's just the next guy in he line. was like this so here's let's reenact <laughs> He, 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 here he, he follow <laughs> f- 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 follow what do you my mean lead to do, bro what, f- what follow is this? my lead dan wasn't there I just said, here, follow my lead. And he's like, oh, okay. I do it, and the dude crushed. Boom, boom, boom. Hit four shots right in a row, like the whole thing. He even got yeah. the no. It was good. It was good. <laughs> I, I, I swear to this day, I don't think she actually said yes. She just grabbed it and put it on her finger. I mean, you had told me that. You, have, yeah. you haven't actually you yeah, heard I, her I say don't, yes. She says she did. Yeah. I don't believe it, so it may not be legal. So the funny, The funny thing, like, you think Todd's bad on the show? <laughs> Not bad. We're playing cards against humanity at the house. Which Jared can't wait for it to be over because he's so much fun. I won. Are we done yet? No, I did very well. That's the last round, right? There's nothing like... No, anyway. You it's never just, play Monopoly, do you? Oh, I was... Yeah, I used to embezzle like Monop- money from the bank. Because it just takes forever Well, yeah, it's play. about money. It was... I liked Monopoly. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> we even got a laugh from Dan on that one. Shut up, Dan! <laughs> um, it was because Todd's wife... <laughs> 
is cracking up at some of these things, and she's cracking jokes that are worse than what Todd would come ah, up with. That's why. That's why we're 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 soulmates. She ends up giving me the <laughs> finger. <laughs> I saw that. It was kind of funny. It was yeah, funny. You guys always good. go to Disney though, right? Like every other year or something. Yeah. So you're I a big mean, Disney family, so it makes years. sense. Yeah, we we've, we're gonna wait till Star Wars is done. Now, nice. It's yeah, like 2019. We, yeah. So yeah. We, we generally go all now. Time. Pandora. That's opening up the. Like uh, that just opened now. up last week. Yeah, it's open. So hopefully it's not crazy packed when we go, but I'm sure it will be. Nobody even knows what Pandora is, so I don't think you have anything to worry about. No, I think it's pretty big. What's Pandora? That's the place where it's you buy bracelets. World. It's where you buy bracelets and charms. Yeah. Is that where you listen to music? <laughs> yes. Anyway, let's get to photo news because you're news. going away. Yeah. I mean, so hurry anyway, up. Got photo news. What was that, Todd? See, Jared's going to have an absolute nervous breakdown while you're away. By when the way. I leave, I should just document it for everybody. When vlog you vlog it, it. You going to vlog? Oh, I'm going to vlog his nervous <laughs> breakdown. Yes. I'm going to vlog it, dude. Well, speaking of vlogging, where we were at the DJI event, they unveiled their tiniest drone yet. It's called the Spark. Now, the new drone weighs in at 10.6 ounces with a body about the size of a standard smartphone. Aren't like you upset that it didn't fold up? See, I feel like it didn't fold up because they didn't want to give another extra step to like the beginner drone and yeah. you know pilots. It should have folded up. I agree because then you could literally it put it been in your this pocket. Big. You could have hung it from your neck. Literally like could have been the size like of your flavor. Flav. It should have had flavor flavor, and he could put spinners. flavor flavor. What what? It's probably built with one metal piece. Yeah. Like it's probably the arms and the base, and it probably maybe helps the props to make would have been too small and too you know fragile that they would just snap off if they folded. I don't know. Now it's bigger brother, the Mavic. Obviously that folds up so. When it is folded up, it's almost probably the same size as the Spark, oh. if you were to think about it. That's a little, it's bigger. It's a still. little bigger, it's still yeah. Bigger. But speaking of the Mavic, I flew it. Uh, I, haven't been, I haven't been flying a lot, so I charged up the oh, batteries. I thought you were talking about the Spark, the Mavic. No, I took the Mavic to my dad's house. Nice. Because um, while I was vlogging, I went and shot soccer with the 100 to 400 Sigma, which I don't think is very good right now. Before mm. I have to go look at the images, but it looked like it wasn't hitting folk. And I used a D500. Didn't because, seem sharp? No, nah, I think it was missing. Hmm. I just think I was... It was just like... And you use a D500. Huh? And I, well, I use a D500 because I don't think a person should buy a 100 to 400 on the the D5, personally. D500, yeah. No, D5. Oh, on the D5. I'm saying full frame. I don't think that's a... I think it's an $800 lens, but I don't think it's going to compete with the, the, the Canon 100 to 400. Yeah. I just don't... And it's a contemporary, so it's not a... It's not the art lens, or it's not a sport, so it's more of the lower end. It's a mega zoom for 800 bucks that... Anyway, I just think it missed just a little bit. Uh, but anyway, I flew the drone by my dad's house. It was awesome, man. Felt good? Yeah, the, the drone felt great. I took it to my brother's house to fly, and his, the little kid was just like... Eh, so. What are you shooting usually, like 60 frames per second? I don't know. I left it at 24 or 4K. Mm. What should I be shooting at? I personally usually do 60 and then cut it in half just so it's a little more cinematic looking for the drone shot, like that mm. epic slow motion. But I'll do whatever. I think I texted Richie and I forgot to ask him that question. Yeah. It was just set to whatever. The standard I just was. wanted to fly. Yeah. And it looked great. It, it still looked good. Raw fi pictures in the sky. But man, that thing is stable. I bought some landing gear for it. And for a thousand bucks. It's not bad. Yep. Yeah. But yep. I had to buy some landing gear. I ordered. It was like $8.88. They're like these 3D <laughs> printed just extensions for the feet, the legs, because they're, you can't really take off from grass. It's literally if the grass like is in too the high. Grass. It's in the grass. It just so, starts. So, so it's your, a weed whacker at that point. Your camera would be in the lens. In, in, the, right in, the in the grass. And then it can't move. So yeah, yeah, I, I looked at drone mats. You could get a drone mat, which. Uh, tether tools. Tether tools. Oh, never, tether tools. Have, yeah. never sent us. It's Damn literally it. like the table. Like that thing, whatever that's called. I thought we were getting sent a, a tether tool. We, we need to reach out to my girl. I reached out to him, and he never got back to me. It's Haters. Brian, right? Yeah, I think so. I talked to him like once. He's like, yeah, and then silence. Anyway, yes. flew the drone. Pretty cool. Go ahead. So back to the Spark, though. This thing comes uh, stacked with a half point three inch 12 megapixel CMOS sensor that I believe the Mavic also has the same size. Uh, this thing tops out at 1080p at 30 frames per second, though. There's no 60, no 4K, very consumer friendly. No 24? Uh, I think it's just 30, just right? 30. Yeah, it's locked just in at 30. 30. Now, it does have a gimbal, but it's only two axis, opposed to the three axis in the Mavic, and it's accompanied by electronic stabilization. So when, when they are, you know, go hand in hand together, it actually is pretty stable. Now, the drone can also be controlled by hand gestures. This was a big thing at the event, uh, and can even land and take off from the palm of your hand with no remote required, although they do offer a remote option for more complex maneuvers, they say. Is it, waterproof? Is it waterproof in case you want to use your hand? <laughs> I was just thinking... Use this hand gesture, <laughs> asshole. I was just thinking, I 
being that the Mavic was in 4K, I think I would have to take it to 2.7K to shoot it at 60 frames. Mm. I don't oh, know if it shoots 60 be. frames at 4K. Probably not. Maybe, I actually yeah. like 2.7, 2. though, because it's just enough. If you're exporting 1080, you can still crop in a little bit if need yep. be. True. Yep. Yeah, it looks great still. For a shot like that, I mean... 4K might yeah, be. Yeah, I think through. that's what we normally shoot at is 2.7K. Yeah, for whatever 60 reason, frames. it was set to 4K. That's not a big deal. I need, well, yeah, no, the footage was just yeah. for fun. So, this thing also has obstacle avoidance like DJI's other drones, but it only features sensors in the front and on the bottom of it, uh, not 360 which like is the still Phantom 4. Cool. It also has a new shallow focus mode, which that's I thought was stupid. It's interesting, though, that they're putting this into <laughs> consumer drones. It's just like Apple's like new portrait mode on the iPhone uh. 7 Plus. It basically automatically finds your face and attempts to blur out the background digitally. Somebody brought up a funny point to me on Facebook. Yeah. It was Sharky James guy. Mm -hmm. He sent me a message. He goes, he goes, uh, there's something weird about that whole promotional video. You know, there's a woman hanging on a cliff. Where'd she take it off from? How'd she fly? And then how did it land in her hands when she's hanging off the cliff? Well, we also discussed Is it this. In the battery life, fifteen minutes. Sixteen minutes. Sixteen yeah. minutes. Yeah, she's it's, a fast climber. It's it's very short compared to the other drones. Now we also discussed this before the event when we saw the launch video. The footage looks way too nice. To it be looks great. The Spark. Really? Like I don't think they actually filmed that promotional video on the Spark. But eh. though when Casey did his Mavic for Spark, the Spark looked better than the Mavic for whatever reason. Yeah, it did actually look pretty good. But, but that could be Casey how he so said it. He usually doesn't set it right most yeah. of the time. So this thing also uh, has a sport mode that tops out at 31 miles per hour, and it can be pre-ordered now for $500 for the standard kit or $700 for the remote package, which also comes with more accessories like a second battery. Uh, and the biggest news comes in five different colors. Yeah, great. Perfect. So five colors. Perfect. The, the question people are going to ask is, should I get a Mavic Pro or a Spark? And a Spark is a toy. Do you, you want a toy or do you want something that's professional, right. in my opinion? But if you're just traveling around and, I mean, the auto modes, the the spiral, the the sky ro the rocket. Which, though, doesn't every DJI drone have? I have just to the find app. it in the Mavic. I think it's just the app I that has it. have to find it in the Mavic, though. Yeah. I don't they are know nice, how though. to do the, cir the circle. I want the spiral, it to like, hover. stop on me and I want to tell it to go do a circle cinematically around me. Um but you know you, those features are cool. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the Spark. I th still think five hundred bucks without a remote is pretty expensive. Um, I agree. But if you're serious about it, and and not super serious, but you don't want to spend two grand or what is it like sixteen hundred for a uh, the one inch sensor, which is much nicer. But you want for something the Phantom Four, you mean? Yeah, Phantom Four Pro, something like that. Yeah. But you want to fly. The, the Mavic is great for. I put it in this little bag. Yeah, I think if you're even considering any kind of semi professional use or high end hobbyist. The Mavic's probably better than the yeah. Spark. Yeah, no, I agree. You just have more options. Yeah. There's there's room to grow yep. with the Mavic. With a Spark... Now, I will say, if you're just doing vlogging or something, I mean... Yeah, if you, you just need something quick. quick. aerial shot for two seconds, yep. who cares? Yep. As long as you get that two-second shot and you're set. Yep. Nice establishing shot or something. Uh, and then speaking of drones, you no longer need to register non-commercial drones with the FAA. Uh, a model aircraft enthusiast named John Taylor won a lawsuit after a federal court in Washington, D.C. ruled that the FAA's drone reg registration rules were in violation of a law that was passed by Congress in 2012. Now, the law, which was called the FAA Modernization and Reform Act, prohibited the FAA from passing any rules on the operation of model aircraft. Uh, this means you no longer need to register your drone unless you're using it commercially. So if you literally are buying a toy like the Spark, you don't need to register that. Well, if you're buying any drone, you don't have to register it. What the? F what is that? Sounds like an earthquake. What? I assume they're probably laying the asphalt outside. Oh, that's probably heating up the asphalt. Yeah. Is that the... That's is that what's happening? That was a is fire there a breathing dragon outside? So right now the road is currently closed down next to us, and I think they're repaving we the don't entire need thing. Yeah, but there's some cars parked there. Your car, right? No, I parked on the side, yeah. even though. Thank God, I moved my car. It was right there. But but there was no signs that said no parking today. Yeah. This, I think it ended the thirtieth. Yeah, it did. Uh, and initially it ended the twenty sixth. Oh, Friday. Right. Yeah. Right. So anyway, back to this. For those who weren't aware, uh, back in December of 2015, the FAA started a new registration system which required pilots to register all their drones, whether used for fun or for business purposes. Now it costs $5 to register with over 820,000 people that are currently signed up. So right now you don't have to register, but I do think that who the FAA down? will appeal this. What was that? Who struck a down court. The, the court? Oh. A court. They Federal made, court in D.C. There was some drone... There was some... Uh, oh. Phone call. Hello there, son bitches. I'm 
calling you from the uh, office of DTF with my Lord and Savior, Donald J. Trump. And I will like to put out a statement regarding this so-called judge that made this uh, so-called decision on my drone regulations. Uh, we will be appealing this to the Supreme Court. And if we get shot down there, I'm also going to appeal it to my Lord and Savior, Donald J. Trump, who is also the king of the world. Goodbye, Jew. What does being a Jew have to do with anything? <laughs> You tell me. Thanks. Why is, it, why is it the Hebrew Trinity? Ooh. Because because I'm Jewish. Well, I call it the Holy Trinity. It's not the Holy Trinity. I mean, it's it's the not Holy the three Trinity. amigos, and it's not the three ninjas. I like the three amigos, to be honest. Yeah, I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, my favorite part of that movie. So my brother and I are what? like uh, I'm like six or seven watching that on beta. Yeah. We've got this beta deck that you press a button, the beta tape pops up, you put it in, Ooh, you press it back down. Fancy. It's got the mechanical yeah, buttons. Fancy. And you can hear the thing click when you rewind it. We get to the part where they're singing in the bar. You know, <laughs> My Little Buttercup. Yep. You know, yep. makes the heart go. And then they turn to the, the, the bartender and he goes, My Little Buttercup. I don't know. He just... My brother and I just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. So that, we just kept rewinding. That is the perfect movie for like eight, nine, ten year olds. Because just hip thrusts are always funny at that point in that point in your life. <laughs> yeah. That's a good he, movie. He shot me. <laughs> it's a funny movie. Uh, so what do you think will happen with this whole FAA situation though? Do you think they will yeah, appeal they'll it, and they'll, they'll, they'll get it paid? I mean, they're, they're losing a the, lot of money, I'm sure. They're losing a lot of money, but you know, I'm not a big fan of rules and you know, oversight and everything, but for the five bucks, register your drone. They're not even coming. At, they, they don't have an enforcement agency yet. Anyway, I mean, the DTF. to come after you, other than the D, <laughs> and that's not even the DTF is a bunch of shit. It's, it's headed up by a loser, big loser with a capital L. Uh, loser. All right, I heard of you, son of a bitch, because we got your place bugged. We'd be tapped into your <laughs> your uh, your little Canon little well, little camera. Well, excuse me, sir. We are live broadcasting on Facebook, so. I don't give a damn about no live broadcasting. You better not be broadcasting my my sweet daughter's sweet, sweet sweetens. Because over Memorial, over Memory Day, we saw some drones flying above our, our in-ground pool that's above ground that I got from Walmart the day before. But regardless, don't be looking at her sweetens. Happy Memorial Day, and God bless America, Jew. Was he at the soccer game that you were flying your drone over? No, Meredith wasn't at the, at the, <laughs> at the thing. Uh, then we have Photokina. It's set to become an annual event starting in 2018. Where's Photokina held? Germany. Where at? In Cologne, right? Cologne! Nine! 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 Nine. Not 2019, Hello. but 2018. So known to take place every two years, the largest Since photography trade show. Since something Yep. Uh, they plan to reposition itself to cover a broader range of products. We want to make more money and charge people yeah. annually as opposed to every five years. Now, Photokina says years. the changes are being made to optimally reflect the fast-paced nature and the ever briefer uh, innovation cycles of an increasingly digitalized industry. Yeah, because who needs to go to a show when they just announce shit? Yep. Anyway, and it's usually before the event even right, starts, right? And the then it gets, it gets leaked two hours beforehand. Like, Actually, cool. it gets leaked two weeks before. I'm here yeah. at the event to tell you about the stuff you already know about. Yep. But I had to fly all the way to Germany to tell you. I mean, it's still fun going. I guess it is fun. That was fun. We did a lot of stuff. It was fun. When we went. Yeah. yeah. Well, both times. If Jared wasn't there, it would have been better. But a little better. He had complete nervous breakdown on the ride. Are you ready? Here, let me just go f and say something. I get really excited to meet. Mm. I know I should flip it. I just don't know what the. F to say good. good place to stop yeah what the f no i was pausing so that i could continue as soon as the bike went chop 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 perfect we're winning on the rhine uh... why well, i'm man that i can get a lot of information to and go f yourself yeah, I guess so. Now, <laughs> exactly. starting in September of 2018, the show will become a more compact, more intensive <laughs> yeah. trade fair take experience. Up one hall instead it's gonna of nine. It's going to be in the Colner Dome. Yeah. It'll run for only three days this time. So oh. from September 26th to the 29th, instead of all week when long. Is this? this is 2018. Oh. So not this September, but the following September. And it's only going to be three days instead of a week. Uh, I mean, does this mean we're going to get also much 
quicker camera updates? There's no more three year cycle because of Photokina, or does Nobody that even matter? Shit I about I just know cameras. I know camera companies and manufacturers like to wait until Photokina to release their next no, big product. They don't give a shit anymore. You got C plus plus. You've got all of these eight million other things. Like who gives a shit about these shows? It's I not agree, 1952 yeah. where you were like, and today in photography, where you went and watched newsreels of what was happening because you didn't get that. You had to wait for the magazine. Magazine. You had to wait for these big... This was a massive event where everybody announced stuff, and then... You smoked cigarettes. You didn't even know the stuff got announced at home until you read it in the magazine. Yeah. Or you went to the local camera store and was like... This got announced? Did you hear... Where's my new Playboy, honey? I want to see the new cameras. Dude, <laughs> speaking of Playboy... <laughs> there we time. go. Yep. There we go. My vintage Down the Playboys. Rabbit bought it for the stories, right? But the vintage Playboys, I didn't buy them. They were given to me by a photographer. Yeah. My friend, her her dad. I was go- I, I've told this story before. Many times. The enlarger that's downstairs, the Bessler enlarger, she asked... She's like, they're moving to California. Do you want the enlarger? I was like, Yes. On the way over, I get a phone call. Oh, do you also want his vintage Playboy collection? He's got two, three tubs of them. They're like mint condition, too. And he answered, yes. I was like, (laughs) awesome. All the pages are stuck together, but yes. So this is the late 60s and and all through the 70s. And you look at these ads. The camera ads are Yashica and Nikon and Canon and Polaroid. They do. And then... Cigarettes Leica. and alcohol. No Cigarettes, Leica. cameras, and alcohol. Oh, that's man. All, that's was all it? I want and in the life. articles are good. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> but yeah, so that's it for the Photokina story. I am kind of shocked that they finally, it took them this long to switch Well, now it I up. don't know. Are we going to go? Like, I don't want to go every it year. It almost seems really like a go pared e- down version. And I mean, it's just pared. It almost and seems smaller. It's pared down, but then it's every year now, too. It's going to be but, annually. And they're moving it to of, when? May? It, no, it's September. It's still no, the same. It said they're moving it till May. This is September. It'll take place now in I think, eighteen. But they're in gonna, nineteen. In the nineteen. They're going to switch yeah. it to like May mm-hmm. because yeah. we've got Photo Plus in, in always in October. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it'll stay September this in 2018, but then, yeah, it will move to May 2019 and every year after that. And then we have the Obama administration White House photographer Pete Souza. Obama! Obama! He followed House of Cards President Frank Underwood, a.k.a. actor Kevin Spacey, uh, all around Washington, D.C. for a promotional campaign. You don't watch? I do. His thing is... Oh, the knock. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, also joining the Netflix POTUS was Chief of Staff Doug Stamper, Doug actor Stamper, he's a Michael badass. Kelly. Uh, the photos, which were all posted on Sousa's Instagram, uh, which comes with 1.4 million followers as well, included a photo op outside the White House where Spacey was meeting his quote-unquote supporters in the D.C. subway, uh, the presidential limo, which they call the Beast, a whole bunch more. Sousa followed him around, took a bunch of pictures. I That's thought this funny. was a great That's marketing funny. campaign. Yeah, I wonder what he got paid for that. Yeah, I wonder. Because that was awesome. Yeah, and uh, House of Cards' fifth season and that actually debuts today, today at today. the time of this recording. Probably live right now. It should be live right now, yeah. So Which by the time I, this comes I out. I can't decide if I want to watch it or not. It's weird to watch like fake presidential news. I just turn on Fox usually. <laughs> I will say I, I kind of forget what happened in season four because I binge watched it in like a day and a half. So oh. I feel like I have to rewatch that. We can't spoil it. I, I, I definitely need a refresher yeah. from four. Yeah, I, I need to I, watch I four again. You know what they should put together before each? They should have episode zero zero of season five should be a recap. Just a summary of, yeah. They do that. Some, on, do some, that. some series some do that where they'll have like HBO last good season like, like, like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like HBO's watch really good yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe they have that. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Sony. They've completed their Trinity with two new lenses. The 12 you mean, to 24. You mean the three Amigos. The three Amigos, excuse yeah, me. Uh, the 12 to 24 f4G <laughs> lens, and adding to their high end lineup, uh, the 16 to 35 f28 G Master lens. I need to. I want to borrow it. The um, lens rentals has them in stock. The G Master ones? No, 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 no. They have the camera in stock. The only lenses in stock. Oh, you're is saying the 24 the Sony to 70? Yeah, the A9. The the only lenses in stock 24 to 70 G. Uh, master and the 7200 G Master. G-G. This other one's not out yet. This 12 to 24 yeah. isn't out yet, but you could get an 85 one four. You could get stuff like that, but there's a lot of options. They're getting there. There are, but they are. I, 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 if I had three choice, three lenses, it would be the 12 to 24. Excuse me, the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. So you would take the 12 to 24 f4 over the 16 to 35 28 G Master. Wider. I'm just saying for the glass, it's not a G Master lens. I mean, I want wider. Yeah. No, Am I, I upset? agree. Dan, what are you cold? You want my road jacket? Maybe you shouldn't shave next next. How month. is it? Co- it's not even cold. So for those that can't see, because the GoPro is not picking them up, Dan just put on a hoodie. What are you What are you looking at, Dan? What's it say up there? Seventy one degrees in here. Freezing. Apparently. Freezing cold. Put on your road jacket. I mean, oh. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, I just asked. I just said that. So the 12 to 24 f4G is Sony's widest full frame E mount lens to date, while the 16 to 35 2 8 G Master lens uh, completes Sony's G Master Large Aperture Zoom Trinity or Amigos. Three Amigos. Uh, the 16 to 35 will run you $2,200, while the 12 to 24 comes in at $1,700. So See, that's still expensive. The 12 to 24, for a lens. that is expensive. That's pricey. Yeah, and it's not, again, a G Master lens, but I think that range, 12 to 24, is much better than 16 to 35. No, I don't think especially it, when you have a 24 to 7. I mean, it's an F4, right? Yep. Mm. Which the 11 to 24 Canon is an F4. The Nikon is a 14 to 24 2 8. Yeah. At this point, it's like, does it matter with the ultra wide lenses that it's a 2 8 or a 4? Like, the bokeh doesn't matter at that point because oh, you're not getting I, everything's I in focus so pretty much anyway. Yeah. Like, right even, now, we're Even using, in video, when you're doing a wide shot, yeah. I mean, you we're, probably want most everything in focus anyway. Todd's angle, we're using the 11 24 F4 from Canon. Now, I did see a series, too, that Canon talked about, like, their best lenses they ever made. And they the people who created that, that one, the engineers, said that they could have made a 12 24 2 8, but Canon's head engineers wanted them to make it the widest. Uh, full frame or huh. something like that. So they did, they did 11 to 24. Oh, I love that. Lens. Which they had to make it F4, not 2.8. I yeah. personally would have had a, preferred a 12 to 24, 2.8. But well, then they would have just been copying Nikon. Yeah. If I had not to really. Redo Nikon's it. what? 14 to 24, right? Oh, 14 to 24. Oh, yeah. 12 I'm to 12. Oh, instead of 11? Yeah, 12 to 24, and it would have been the same would have been nice. price, I believe, too. But that's the only thing I don't like about that lens is it's $3,000. <laughs> I, I bought it. Um, yeah, I borrowed all the time from Jared. 2500 bucks I paid. Yeah, well, now I think it's 2700 new on B&H. Well, I got it hmm. refurbed. You got it refurbed, uh, No, right? I got it returned, like a return open box item. Oh. It from, looks brand new. I found it online, like, like at a reputable yeah, store. It yeah. was Adorama. That's the way to go. Yeah, well, Adorama, I buy everything used. I saw it pop up on Lens Adorama, wise. and I was like, 500 bucks? All right. So 500 bucks off. And we would probably use that with the 5D Mark IV because that insane crop factor, if we wanted to do like somewhat of a wide yeah. shot, yeah. Mm. it would turn it into... Well, we did do that with the... Like 40 Sometimes millimeters. I feel like a time machine. Oh, yeah, we did. Ill we dudes. used it for the 5D review. Yeah, we did. I'm yeah. always using that 16 to, to 35 primarily in 4K on that, fi on that 5D Mark IV yeah. in video. Are you so. using it at 16, like wide? Usually like 24. Okay, so you're that's like a 40 so I could, probably. You know, yeah, I, I could use a 24 or 70, but then I can at least have a little wiggle room. Yeah, that's nice. Wiggle, mm -hmm. wiggle, wiggle. Hey, guys, I, I meant to tell you there was a news story that came out. Um, Hold on. Breaking news. Shaggy finally admitted <gasps> it was him. <laughs> I thought it wasn't him. No, it was him. <laughs> He's the, type, come from? he's the types of jokes he was telling at my party, by the way. <laughs> and I literally had to tell him and make the announcement like, and you realize, everybody, he's the only one not drinking. And he was the most ridiculous one at the party. I was not ridiculous at all. Did you have a drink at your brother's even? No. No drinks at all? No. I was he trying. was dancing. He was grinding his ass on me. It was really inappropriate. Yeah, but... That's Jared every day, though. That's what I'm saying. There's it was nothing super, yeah. I, I mean, love if he when he gets had a drink, drink in him and he's even crazier. We could have taken it to the next level, Jared, like you've been dreaming about all these years, but <laughs> it, it's just an, it wasn't in the cards. I did have a dream last night that I that I ate gluten gluten filled mac and cheese. <laughs> gluten filled. So this is an actual dream I had, and I was like, oh my god, was I it like just a nightmare. Ate, and it was I was shoveling mac and cheese. I'm like, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> And I woke up, I was like, oh, man, thank God that Sweating. wasn't real. Thank God that wasn't real. <laughs> I met your uh, mother-in-law for the first time. We've, was that the first we've, time no, you guys I've met her already? Met. We've that's never funny. met. Yeah. Well, if you want to meet her, I have a new uh, Nest camera that's in my house that she doesn't know is there. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my living room. -uh. And I can see, like, when I leave the house no, in the morning that's... to drop my daughter off, she scurries down the, 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 down into the, into the living room and into the kitchen and gets some food, and then she scurries back up like a little mouse. <laughs> it's like Lil. <laughs> before, before, before I get home. And I can see I'm coming home, and then she scurries... <laughs> Oh, and then shouldn't you probably tell her that She's there's like a camera a recording her nope. at all times? Nope, <laughs> nope, because I'm gonna bust her for something. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> she was all like, "Hello, it's nice to meet you, Fro." Does She's, the Fro oh, know? She is super prim and proper. Is there a Fro below? I tell you what, dude. Though end of the night, I I, I started putting bottles away. Whole, whole kitchen was clean already. She cleaned she, it. She, she, she's like Alice. That was me. She's like Alice at, uh, from the Brady Bunch. That was me. Was Alice you. from the that Brady Bunch. Not you. 
But so thank God for her there. She uh, she uh, she was the den mother for the party. And then there's one more news story. This actually just came up right before we started filming, so I don't really have a proper announcement. But Nikon announced three new wide-angle Nikkor lenses and a they cool have, Pix camera for some and a cool Pix camera, which I'm not even going to talk about. The DX Nikkor 10 to 20 f4.5 oh. to 5.6G. That sounds VR. terrible. I'm surprised they put VR in that did, wide did of a price, lens. Did, was, there, was there pricing on that? Uh, I'm sure it will be here somewhere. This is the actual press release. Yeah, because I didn't get a chance to read it yet. Now, there's also the AFS Fisheye Nikkor 8 to 15 F35 to 45. That's e, the big deal. ED. Yeah, that's, that's a circular the, fisheye. But, but at 15, it's not circular. It's full frame at 15. So Canon has a 8 to 15 F4. Yep. Which is a kick ass, kick ass fisheye lens. I just don't love circular fisheyes personally. No, they look like Me crap. Neither. Yeah. And Nikon's only fisheye on full frame, modern, is the 16 millimeter 2.8, which I traded Richie my 10.5 fisheye for his 16 at the time when I went full frame and he was still DX. Mm. That lens sucks balls <laughs> in terms of focus, uh, in terms of sharpness. It just doesn't look sharp. And so hopefully the, can, the, the Sony fanboys will praise me for ripping on Nikon lenses right now. But, that's, but the truth is that 16 millimeter 2.8 was great back in the day. You, they didn't update it. It still has the, the, the aperture ring on it. Wow. That's mm. how old that lens was. And expensive. Uh, so they also released a 28mm Nikkor F14 EED prime lens as well. Now, price-wise, the 8-15 to fisheye is $1,250. Really? Yes. $1,250. I now, mean, that's I'm, not that bad. The, for the Canon, I think, is like $1,400. It's an L lens. I know that. Well, But the Nikon is a 3.5 to 4. Five six, correct. Like, why couldn't they make that and have four? Actually, no, it's three five to four five. Oh, four five. That's not bad. Three five to four five is fine, but I won't be shooting circular. Circular is stupid. You'd probably only shoot probably what fourteen to fifteen millimeters on here. Fifteen most is of the time. Only fifteen full frame. I thought after you got to like twelve, it goes to full frame. Until you do those new nineties trans world skateboarding videos again. Exactly. Then the, you can need that again. the Canon one and leave them circular fish eyes. Exactly. If you put the Canon less than I think fifteen, because we used it out the at the track when we. I thought did. it was a little before. But you see the lens hood in it if you do it you like do that. but you can always crop no what oh my god did i just say that uh and then we have the 10 to 20 that one's going to be priced at 309 dollars. oh jesus christ yep really high end and then we have the uh the prime is going to be two grand well so 28 millimeter f14 eed so that goes with the 24 one four 28 one four i don't know why you need a 28 one four 35 one four 50 one four 85 one four 105.14. I don't think I would get a prime that wide unless I was shooting video. Uh, my, I, so back personally. in the day, I bought a 22.8. was my widest lens on film. That was fixed, prime. Yeah, yeah, 22.8. That was like the widest I could afford like afford because at the time maybe there was a 14, but that was this massive thing. I bought the 22.8 and it was great. You, you did like it. Well, it gave me wide. I yeah. didn't have wide I just don't, at the time. I don't like... The uh, widest I had was a 35 to 70. Oh, uh, gotcha. That's was the, that was the 35 to 72.8. They didn't have a 28 to 70 okay, yet. that makes sense. And this was a 20 millimeter 2.8. It was yeah. wider. Currently today, I probably wouldn't go wider than 35. I'd probably get a 35, 14 prime and then just go up from there, 50, 85, 105, 135. For photos or for video? For photos mainly. I yeah. was saying for video, I could see why yeah. get a prime lens that wide. That makes sense but photos i don't know if i would necessarily shoot i wouldn't shoot a portrait with a 24 one no, four no no but the 24 one four is super duper sharp oh yeah i remember i took that out to new hope i believe all to of make nikon's a video prime about. lenses are really really sharp that 105 man tack sharp the 105 is gorgeous and your 7200 i'll take the sharpening all the way off and shoot video and it still looks like it's sharpening applied yeah they've done a great job with those lenses they they really stepped up their game and that's it for, for, well, they, never uh, have for stepped up. they never stepped down their game well you compare that well, 7200 to that? Sure. Huge difference. True, true, true. So you that. That's stepping up. You have the game. better one, Stephen? Uh, oh, no, no, that one's the old one. Of course, I gave Jared the better one. Come uh, on now. Oh, dang it. Got to see who's sharper. Straight out of focus. So that's the, the photo news? Yeah, that's I it. I do have a story I want to bring up. Oh, yeah? It's not photo news. It's... Uh, Jared News? Todd, why are you logged into the live stream? He's watching right there. Look I at mean, him. I, I, I glance to make sure this asshole's not <laughs> making comments and telling About, lies on it. So... On Instagram, I got a uh, one of these posts. I'm not going to give the guy's name, but it it it's, starts off like this. I was robbed and lost every piece of camera equipment I own, $15,000 plus, while on a 10-day skate-slash-surf trip with five friends uh, through California from Texas. 
We were having dinner in San Francisco, came back to a busted window. I lost everything, including my luggage, leaving me with nothing but the Damn. clothes on my back. I have been was shooting in his car? A, a van. I've been shooting for about oh. four years now and investing in my passion slowly while trying to survive along the way. I work very hard for everything I own. I'm only asking for a share. He's asking me to share his GoFundMe, which is looking to raise $15,000. Damn. And, we, and, and though I feel absolutely terrible that the guy's gear was stolen... I asked him the question, of course, do you have insurance? Did you download my gear vault? No, he didn't. You didn't ask that yet? So he thought that he, was the next question. he thought he had insurance through Progressive for my renter's insurance. Uh, yep. Uh, but turns out I did. Time. Also, yep. too, did they, they leave, and he did leave the gear in the car, which is, I always say, if you're going to eat, no matter where you Just are, take it in with you. either take it in with you or go to the Chick-fil-A drive-thru and get drive-thru. Chick-fil-A is good, though. That's funny. You always bring up Chick Fil A as an example, except on Sundays. <laughs> Every time uh, we except had Sundays, we had just yeah. got to town and wanted dinner before hitting the hotel. I'm not saying this isn't partly my fault. I'm just a small town guy that's a little naive a to the big city boy. life. Well, I don't buy the small town guy naive. If you're if you're a small town guy naive, then you go to the city scared out of your mind, knowing that shit can get stolen. Uh, the moral of the story here. It sucks that this happened. Yep. I'm not going to share out anybody's GoFundMe to help them insure their stuff. It sucks that he thought he had insurance and he was paying for it for three and a half years, but he wasn't. So the whole point, a lot of the point of my gear vault is not just to organize your gear. We knew that there was an issue with people getting coverage because a lot of people, they don't know how to get co Is it raining? I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's a real gloomy day out. They don't they they just don't know what to do. And so that's where the educational stuff will be coming in more into play. We have some good educational videos already in the app. Yeah, I think we did pretty the, good. The thing is, I just sent Steve, my partner in the business, uh, I'm like, give me five tips for people who are amateurs to make sure to ask their insurance people, their their homeowners or anything. To make sure they they have the right coverage. So five uh, questions to ask. They're yeah. sure. Yeah, five questions you need to ask because the thing that we're running into with my gear vault is there's people that want coverage that aren't considered professionals. The coverage that is through Obvious. my gear vault mm. is considered professional coverage, which means if you are not a professional, you cannot get covered, which sucks. I wish mm. we could cover everybody the, through the the partners because yeah. we're not an insurance company, but the reason. You, 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 you're you're not a professional, so you're not going to get professional coverage. It just won't happen. But if you are a professional, you're doing jobs, you're doing shoots, then you can get professional coverage. It's going to cost you four-ish, five hundred dollars a year, depending on how much gear you have. And that's not bad. No, no but on the flip bad. side, not I for asked, the amount of coverage. I asked Steve from a business perspective, how come we can't give people get people insurance for this for their they're amateurs if they're amateurs. And he yeah. said, basically, the premiums are too small. And it makes sense. It, in, in, in a business sense. Now, could people get that added on to their renters? Like, hey, I got extra stuff. Add, you know, I'll pay an extra $10, $20 a month yeah. on my renter's insurance. So, like, like if, we don't have a, if you don't have a solution in my gear vault, what's the solution for people? those, those people in the middle? Well, those are those five questions yeah. to ask. And well, tell them to hurry up. Explain. So uh, let's see. Steve gave me a couple of real things other than he said that makes him cringe that the guy thought he had coverage and didn't that and that's the insurance that really people sucks. he's going to try and put something together for me what's the marine insurance called again what's inland marine so inland, inland marine. marine isn't it that most companies don't offer that as like an add-on or something like that if you have renters or something something like that along yeah, those lines so he said they need an inland marine floater slash rider added to their homeowners and to schedule their valuables so this is where you still use my gear vault because oh, yeah. you schedule your value. Literally, yep. you go yep. to your homeowners people, and we're going to come up with the questions because I don't know the exact questions to ask them to make sure that you are covered outside of your house for all of your gear, no matter what, under as an amateur. Um, so my gear vault will help you in the way that you just send them the PDF or the, sorry the. Uh, CSV file export that t says here's all my gear here's all my gear so it's all here's Check my, out my gear and then if it's cost you fifteen dollars a month or an extra hundred and fifty dollars a year well worth you it. just do it because the last thing you want to have is this guy get his car broken into rule number one also is don't leave your shit in your car um, then then you will have the peace yeah, of mind take it into dinner man I, I actually <laughs> just photographed the XX and Mumford and Sons this past week at two separate shows but the XX uh, to get 
uh, basically the show ended and they made us check all of our gear in. Like I, they said, either put it in your car, you have to check it in if you want to go back into the concert. And I'm like, yeah. no way, I'm putting it in my car. Yep. I will gladly check it in. They had little lockers there and everything. They have and lockers they, now? They oh, let nice. us, yep, check oh, it all in. Awesome. There was a guy yeah. at the counter. He protected it the whole night. So I came back yeah. later and grabbed it. That's and, sweet. Yeah, some of them put it in the car, and I'm nope. like, no, no. I don't know. Somebody, even if it's in the trunk, just trolling the car. Yeah, even if it's you're in the trunk, you're gonna get through that back seat. You break that window, you're yep. set. Yep. I mean, that's, so anyway, I, I brought that up because it's it's a shitty story. It's a shame that that it that sucks. happened. Yeah, but that's part of the reason we created my gear vault is to help people in Prevent the case this. where something gets stolen. Um, and I'm not naive to say that that gear would ever get returned or that my gear vault will help you get your stuff returned. It's more so to make sure that your stuff is cataloged and if something happens, you have the insurance coverage so that you can get new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, flying solo time. Flying solo. Ben Campbell. The cost of lenses can be staggering. You refer to the Hebrew trinity of lenses as one Three of the best amigos. trio. Three amigos. <laughs> 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 Trinity of lenses is one of the best trio of lenses to use for a normal basis. Can you think of a kosher trinity? The kosher trinity. Three diff- decent three amigos, lenses for the enthusiast amigos. without breaking the bank. So I'm going to take this from the level of a DX camera. Okay. You want a freaking budget. I mean, even if Nikon comes out with a 10 to 20 piece of crap lens, that gives you the wide angle. But I always say in, in terms of the lower end, you've got a 17 to 50 from Tamron or Sigma 2.8. That's about 400 bu- 500 bucks or less. That's way worth it to save money. Tamron has the 70 to 200 2.8 G2, which we tested and it was fine yeah. until Sigma comes out with a new one. That was what, 800 bucks? No, thirteen hundred bucks. Something like that. It was thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah. So thirteen hundred, five hundred, so under two grand, you have a basic tr- kosher trinity instead of spending eight grand or nine grand, and then you just throw in a wide angle. Sigma makes some twelve to twenty four DXs, uh, or even wider. Tokina makes an eleven it's to thing. sixteen. There, there's so many third party options now that are quality glass. Yep. Yeah. Rian Jansen, Van Vuren. Hey, Fro, Steven, and Master Todd. The question is more for Steven. Not so much for Todd. Oh, what is the difference between 421, 422, 423 in an 8-bit and 10-bit footage? Thanks a lot. And you guys have really inspired me to up my videography, especially Todd with your vi- oh. with your videos. What's your story? And the three S's. Say it. Spell it. Show it. Goodbye, me and Dan. YouTube.com Dan. backslash cheesesteak media. <laughs> Yeah, good luck. Basically, uh, they're saying 420, 422, or 444. That's the color subsampling. So they didn't even get it right when they said 421, 422, and 423. No, 422 is the standard for ProRes, which is actually what we shoot this middle angle on. Uh, Actually, 99% of DSLRs shoot 4208 bit Mm. internally. You would need an external recorder to have 422 uh, and 10 bit. 10 bit basically versus 8 bit is giving you more latitude and post you're going to have better gradients it's going to be a cleaner image from like your highlights to your shadows uh you can do a lot more pushing and pulling in in post uh because then you have you'll get to 12 bit and 14 bit when you get into like red cameras and c300s and stuff like that that's where you're almost dealing with a full raw image that's insane every single frame that's when you can really the the kind of latitude you have with color correction with red footage and now crazy in terms of 420 422 444 that's just more your color depth that you're dealing with uh, I try and always shoot 422 if we can do an external recorder, but honestly, again, 90% of the stuff we shoot is probably 420. Yeah. And when it's four, on YouTube. Four, and 444 retains like alpha channels and all that stuff. Yes, 444. That's four. the one big thing that I, o- that's the only time I usually use 444. Yep. Is for the, when I need to send you something with the alpha channel. And when attack. we say alpha channel, we mean similar to a PNG where it makes the background transparent. Like transparent. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it will come through as a full video file, but a blank. So, Jared, when I background. send stuff like your lower like third, a lower third. Or, like special designs, yeah. it's 444 so yeah. that you can see so through. So now Dan and I, we now have a preset set for just 444 export if we need to make new assets or something for video footage. But the thing is, once it gets to YouTube, it compresses it down to 4208 bits. So, I mean, there's only so much you can do until it gets crushed anyway yeah. on the internet. It's going to look like dog shit eventually. Yeah, yeah. So I would say 422 10-bit is kind of starting to become the standard. Like the GH5 actually records internally 422 10-bit. Oh, nice. But most stuff is 4208-bit. Nice. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. John Patrick, I shoot with an Icon D810 and my backup is a D500. When's the best time to sell my D810 to get the rumored updated model like you did with your D4S slash D5? <laughs> when they announce it or when it's ready for purchase. So this is tougher when you get into a camera that's not worth $6,000 
that you can sell it for forty five hundred, forty six hundred dollars, still make a buck, and yeah. still you know roll that into the next body. A D eight ten sells for what, like three grand still for new? I think it's more in the twenty five hundred area, but I could be wrong. Well, it's like thirty two hundred. I. Or really? three grand, something like that. Yeah, but it's always been. Mm. It's in the, in the high twos. Yeah, uh, high twos. you're not going to get very much for it. I you 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 sell it as soon as one's announced, or you sell it now. But the problem is, then you don't have your prime camera, so you sell it as soon as you get the new as the new ones announced. You pre-order the new one, uh, so you get that, and then you sell it the day the new one comes in. Yep. He has a backup D500. Well, he's he said, a D500. Right? Yeah, but you know, I sell I sell it as soon as possible. The longer you wait with the camera like that, the less value it will get so whatever you get out of it if you want the new one then you you just roll the money right into the new one because that's one of the things i've done since i was younger i started shooting at 13 couldn't afford everything but i bought the best lens that i could and when i traded that lens in i rolled the money into the next thing i never traded good glass for bodies Mm. that was always to never do that because bodies go away but glass Glass. stays for a long time so wait till it's announced pre-order it Get this thing sold. I will say with my Mark III, I waited probably about two or three months until I bought the Mark IV until it was out. Uh, and I sold it for 1800 And that sells new now for 2300 yeah. mm. But I sold it with the grip, so mm. felt a little better about that. Justin Frick, what's your take on YouTube ads? I have a new channel. 1,860 subscribers. Uh, that's more than Todd. No, it's That's not. a lie. That's um, <laughs> That I'm trying to grow. I've heard that YouTube's algorithm favors channels with ads, but I would hardly make really? any money, and I don't want to potentially turn new subscribers away with ads, and I'm trying to grow. Well, that's the that's how I did what I did way back then, is I, I didn't have ads on for the first year because I just didn't want to bother people. Do you remember how many subscribers you had when you turned them on? I can go back and look because I can oh, see really? where the... Re- well, I can look at where the revenue jumped and then I can find the date where the revenue went up. I'm curious if it, you know, was it like 10,000 subscribers? Like 20,000, 30,000 subscribers okay. maybe. So you maybe. had a good amount. Yeah, slow, such a slow build, man. Yeah. Compared to some other... And now every video is an ad, so how times change. Don't so, forget to download my Gear Vault. The only thing I would say is... Nobody knows what the Google, the YouTube algorithm actually does. We fight it every day, I feel like. We think we finally figured it out. And it's then text switches. messages every single day. <laughs> every single day. You never know what the algorithm's saying. Do you? The, at, at the very least, people are now used to ads. And if you, if you can't skip it, there's a problem. So if you want to put ads on, make sure that people can skip it after yeah. five yeah. seconds. Yeah. And there's actually a new ad bump that's six seconds that you can't skip, can't but skip. who cares? Yeah. It's six seconds and it's over. I think people are now trained to see it. You're yep. not going to piss people off. I'm so like, used to it. I don't care. Back when I started doing ads, there was no skip button. Yes, I would have made more money, but I wasn't getting a shit ton of views. I would have just pissed people off because it yeah. pissed me off. I didn't want to sit through a 15-second ad. Some of the channels today still sit through 30-second yeah. pre-rolls that you can't skip, which YouTube's getting rid of. Would well, you do the banners back then? Like the little. That's it. All I did was the banners. All you did was banners. All I did was the banners. There's no ad video. They ad. still exist, right? The banners. Yeah, yeah, they do. Hmm. And that's flying solo. That's flying solo. I miss gear of the week, so let's get to gear of the week. Gear of the week, and then we'll week. get to wheel of the week. So rolling in right now is a Ben Row. Oh, I thought they were doing the 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 route the the road <laughs> the outside. The asphalt. The repaving. What model sticks did we get? Uh, the actual sticks. The name is on the side. It's a weird number name. It is the Benro C373F. This is their carbon fiber yep. model. C stands for carbon fiber. Thanks, Dan. It is a. We had one of these, and then we just ordered three more. Right, three more. We ordered three more, we and did? then we also put wow. two uh, dolly wheels on them. Two sets of dolly wheels. One for upstairs, one for downstairs. Yeah. And basically, the dolly wheels were only like seventy-five bucks. They're not terrible. The dolly wheels are really nice, and they make them and they lock. and roll it. It's locking. Yeah, they're really... They're, they're, it also they're gives an really extra nice. like five to ten inches yeah. off the ground. Yep. So what's cool about this one is the S8 head. It's called an S8 head, right? Correct. It's a, it's a video head. It's a fluid head. It is great when you're shooting video. It is smooth. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of good movement that you can it's use with it. It's a great fluid it. head, um, which Dan doesn't know how to use. Dan doesn't know how to Dan, Don't you're turn gonna, knobs. Get, you're going to hurt yourself, Dan? Bottom one, Dan. Right here. Yeah, so you can adjust the drag, you can do all that, you can, there's counterbalance. This is their portable series, so basically this is meant to take with you. It's only 17 pounds compared to like the 30 pounds. Comes with a bag. High-end model. I, t- I took this to, I take this to Alan's camera when I make videos. It's we great. travel with something like this. It is a little heavier, 
but it's a stable as hell tripod, and the head on top is awesome. It's lighter compared to, compared to their high end options that have a similar head. So that's why I love it because it is like ten pounds lighter, and that's, we can travel around with it. So for more information, you can go to Ben Rose's site. This is not a plug for them at all. No, um, we just love it. It's just what we use here. Dan, can I get the wheel, please? So. That's the Ben Rowe. And while he's getting the wheel, there is also a low-profile head you can get where you can bring it all the way down, almost like a hi-hat, to the ground, yeah. about a couple inches off the ground, and you can film whenever. So we do a lot of macro shots Rap videos. Like that. Rap videos. Oh, that thing. Yeah, you can make it all the way down, low-profile to the ground, where it's almost literally on the yeah, ground. Yeah, that thing's cool. They gave us that. They come in yeah, handy. Yeah, we use the hi-hat all the time. Mm. They come in handy. It's time to spin a wheel. Your bag's still up there, Store. by the way. Store.fronosphoto.com. <laughs> Go to store.fronosphoto.com to get all of your shirts. You can also go to Canon to check out their Canon printers. Rode Microphone, if you want to get the awesome jackets that we were wearing, you can sweet go to swag. Rode Store and you can buy that. It's actually a pretty sweet, cool they're, jacket they're from They're fairly inexpensive, too. It's a high-quality jacket. It's a fairly inexpensive thing. Fairly. But the Rode Microphones, we use them each and every week. We love the sounds of our Rodes. I, uh, what is it? Is he vlogging? <laughs> I don't think he wants to hit your three thousand oh, dollar lens don't anymore. Don't even think about He's it. He's debating it though. This is a Rode microphone that my cat has decided to attack numerous times because of the dead cat. You on about top. to vlog, bro? No, I'm just oh, showing I that I use vlog. a Rode. Oh, all right. This well. is the older Rode. I'm waiting for the newer Rode to show up. That's the original Video Mic Pro, which is great. <laughs> Does a great you got job. A dead cat on the yeah, like you said. With the with the rubber bands for your braces. <laughs> exactly, because now they have the Rycoat Liar. Ooh, uh, Liar. Lexar Hub. We use the Lexar Hub at home. Dan's got one. Steven's got one. Todd does not. I do. Oh, you do? Yes. We use the memory cards, the micro SD, SD, compact flash, XQD, and CFast. That names all the cards. And Hoya and stuff like that. And now I'm going to spin. Kessler. Oh, Kessler Crane. Go to KesslerCrane.com slash Fro. Fro. And use code FRO10 for 10% off. Right. So go to Kessler. <laughs> I like how Todd's going left and right of the lens. Oh, my God. Stop. That's all the money you will be saving at Kessler's website if you use the 10% off That's code. That's right. Good one. We've got the Kessler crane back there, the Pocket Jib Pro. Which now we can really use because we have all this open space. Yeah, we, need, so to, you say. we need to hook that thing up. That thing's so awesome. Say. Because it's got that aperture monitor that works as an aperture monitor. Yeah. Anyway, let me spin the wheel. Let's do it. Bang, bang, bang. Around and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. The wheel of fro is going to stop for a person. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, please. Ow. Congratulations Woo. goes to let's go with the guy who has the YouTube channel who could probably use this, That's Justin perfect. Frick. Congratulations, Justin Frick. You have just won a year of video blocks, Woo. which could come in handy for your YouTube channel. Oh yeah. Now it's time for the memes. Let's do it. Now we're back with memes where you can send them into sing willafro at gmail.com because way back in the 100s episodes, we used to do sing willafro where people would sing the spin that wheel. We got about 10 of them. and No, we got a lot. Wait, and then, we? We, then we changed, then memes started to happen. I, out of yeah. nowhere. We evolved. Yeah. You can yeah. still send in singing ones though if you want. Every once in a while. Feel free. We get a good one. Yeah. yeah, sing, spin that wheel, or just let's see you spin that wheel. Or just sing like Jared does. All right, so the first one is from Alfredo Yabara. Oh. It's mag cover. <laughs> it's uh, the new magazine called Pretentious. Yeah. Ten ways he protects his Porsche from losers. No girlfriend, no problem. How he uses DNA for photo storage. <laughs> exclusive. And exclusive, his love affair with Meredith's daughter, photographer Jared Polin. Alfredo also sent us another one. This one's just a shoot raw. He apparently just wanted to make a little design for you. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Pretty nice. Right. Shoot raw or die trying. Jared <laughs> Pullen. That's his rap video or his rap cover, I guess. The next one is the moods of fro. Oh. The many moods of fro. Happy, sad, <laughs> pumped, medicated, unfocused, unfocused, shocked, eat, pray, love, inquisitive, and damn it, Dan. That's funny. You should make a shirt like that. That's really good. <laughs> Damn it, Dan. Next one's from Darius <laughs> Webb. The... Uh, this was actually in an art museum in New Zealand. It's called, he called it Fro Art. Hi, yeah, I'm Jared Poland. I'm not that hairy. 
Um, he sent me the Andy. original picture Andy. without the swirl in the middle. <laughs> so I do have that if you want to see his junk. It's probably way bigger. What are you going to do with all that junk? All that junk, all Next that Next one's junk. from James Drake. Oh. These are the DTF agents. <laughs> drone task force agents in the field. <laughs> there they are up close. We're both you guys, just you like, guys what? look like deer in the headlights. <laughs> oh, man. Next one's from Matt Thompson. That's this funny. is the scratch. <laughs> That's a nice looking lens you got there. Would be a shame if somebody scratched it. Hashtag scratched it. <laughs> Next one's yeah. from Nicholas Man- Mamory. Mannery. This is Taco Bell baby. <laughs> Please help us congratulate Taco Bell Becky on her f- new firstborn. <laughs> <laughs> Next one's from Nico Riker. This is Pro Photo 101. Don't bring your camera, they said. There will be a pro, f- they said. Mm. <laughs> Next one's from Sanchez. This one's Confucius say, you shoot raw in my eye, you die. What is that little baby? Uh, He sent us another one. This really happened. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Todd Neistat. He also sent us another one. Meanwhile, in Todd's mouth hole, I see you, Frank, you dumb son of a bitch. You can't hide from me. <laughs> oh, that one's good. It's pretty good. That one's really pretty good. good. <laughs> Next one, we've got a video. Right. Dude, I love that video. I am oh, a subscriber you. to your channel. Oh, I tweeted you. it out. What's up? Oh. You retweeted it. I thought he was just some f- asking for a selfie. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Scott Graves, Gravely, for that. I will say I did force Jared to get a picture with him. <laughs> we wanted it for the vlog. It was not a selfie. Now, and the final one is from Scott Wilson. This is sub back. What's <laughs> There's it say? Jared in the back. I hope he wasn't lying about <laughs> subbing back. <laughs> uh. Uh. The other guy, though, that uh, came up a couple of times, in that, at least in that video, was Cinematography Database. He runs that channel, and he was oh, awesome. Oh, that's met right. Him. Yeah, we met him there. Super cool guy. Uh, Vincent Laferay was there. I watched his. Casey. I watched his cinematography uh, look at uh, La La Land recently. Yeah, yeah. the lighting he, breakdowns and all that you stuff. Love that movie. Really interesting. Is that the whip pan thing they were doing? I can't even watch that movie. Ah, I love it. I love it. No, no. And that's it. That's Those all. are your memes. That's a lot of good ones. I pick, yeah. I think the many moods of the fro is good. Yeah, that one is good. That's pretty I did, good. I will say I laughed out loud at the Sanchez one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but Frank. Sanchez doesn't I mean, need to Sanchez win. doesn't count. Well, no, I, mean, I know. He's one enough. one's really good, He's you asshole. Enough. What was that? <laughs> I said the tooth one is good, you asshole, it's great. Sanchez. There's a lot of really good ones yeah. this week. I'm going with the many moods of Fro. All right, so the many moods of Fro. There you go. Daniel um, ha ha ra, ha ra. Daniel ha Hartman. <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Hart- Hartman. Hartman. <laughs> Hart- Hartman. That's, oh, yo, Hartman. that's what we got, yo. Let me stop this. Solid memes. Mm, solid good. memes. Send your memes into sing mm-hmm. wheelofro at gmail.com. <laughs> oh, Dan, Dan, did you hear how Dan just ripped his paper? Like, super excited. Look at He's me. So look at me. Excited. I used a big piece of paper today me. to write like, one like hashtag on it. Look at oh, me. Oh, two hashtags. <laughs> Are they terrible? One hashtag. That da- that Stephen uh, just said. I said hashtag scratched it, and then what's that one? It's no, it says hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtags. Hashtag scratched it. I did. Well, say that. he was busy Facebook living, rep- rep- talking to those. Hashtag people. Todd's missing tooth. Hashtag Frank. hashtag Frank. Todd's half tooth. Hashtag Todd should go get that fixed and stop watching his mother in law. Hashtag pretzel tooth <laughs> hashtag brought to you by Snyder's pretzels in Hanover <laughs> those sons of bitches that was good and that's episode 221 I believe right I think brought so brought to you by Sanchez Art I put I put the news I put my pad away your pad my iPad oh oh your pad bro I thought you were I thought you were pad. wearing your pad this no. week that's it thank you guys for watching please download my gear vault yeah yay that's it okay. you guys want to say anything that's it. Nope. I brought lunch today. Great. I'll be in Disney when you guys watch this. Cheers. Having a blast. <laughs> Cheers. Did you just say yar? <laughs> Cheers. Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com. See ya. Oh, what a douchebag. What a d- and you just blocked Jared's ca- blocked Jared on.